Here he is, the bloke who knows Adobe, the host of Creative Suite TV, Mike McHugh. Hello everyone, it's Mike again, and welcome to Creative Suite TV. This is episode number 36, and we've got a very special episode this week. I'd like to say, before we get started, a very special shout out uh, to a group that's watching this uh, podcast, <clears throat> the InDesign Users Group of Melbourne, my hometown users group, the best InDesign users group in the world, bar none, that's none, everyone, and I defy you to prove it, other inferior InDesign users groups out there. We've got a fantastic lesson on all of the optical excellent things you can do with typography in InDesign. We'll get to that in just a minute. I've got some other wonderful announcements to come up after the lesson. But before we do that, I just, I, I, I'd like to say thank you, not just to the Melbourne InDesign Users Group, but to all the users group, user groups around the world to do with InDesign. The people that organise them do a terrific job. If you've never been along to one, then I'll try and put a, you know, like a URL down the bottom here where I can figure out how to do it a little bit later on, where you can go and join up to your local user group wherever you are in the world. There's one in Melbourne, one in Sydney, all across the United States, and a new one in the UK just started up. I love the users group. As a matter of fact, if you're at the user group now, Let's have a big cyber hug just before the lesson. What do you say? Let me just, let me just give me a big cyber, cyber hug. Oh, who was that? Someone just touched my bottom. Answer yourself, users group. Cheeky devils. Here comes the tip. Okay, welcome to this little lesson we're going to do on typography here. And we've got some, a little bit of a setup first. And we're going to talk about kerning. Let's go ahead and have a look in here at this word typography. And a lot of people get mixed up between kerning and tracking, the space between letters. If we go ahead and select this typography, this word typography here, um, you'll notice that there's two sets right at the top here. We'll zoom on in. There's two sets of letter spacing here. Kerning at the top is a relationship between letters, works in uh, thousandth of an M, and tracking, which is the overall spacing of the letter. So this is the relationship between letters. This is, uh, this is what we're talking about to begin with. Where it says metrics, that is relying on the fonts kerning pairs to change the spacing in between these letters. We haven't done any adjusting yet. Typically, I'm reasonably fussy at organizing the space between the letters. For example, I think the uh, T and the Y are too far apart here and the O and the P are too far apart. Aside from the fact this is an awful looking font, we would have to fix this up by holding down the Alt or the Option key and using the left and right arrows on the keyboard to change the overall spacing. Adobe have some optical options though, which is what we're looking at today, to fix this up. So if I select overall here, and come to the kerning uh, options at the top here. We choose this pop down menu, we can select optical kerning. Now, when we select optical kerning, InDesign is looking at each of the letters and then kerning the pair of them, so the T and the Y, the O and the P, and the G and the R, all separately to make them look excellent. So that's optical kerning, that's optical thing number one. I bet you're wondering uh, why I'm using such an awful font. Let's change it. I'm going with Warnock Pro because I think it's a nice looking font. So I can just select the font family name there at the top. Incidentally, if you use the up and down arrow keys while you've got that selected, you can quickly whip through and choose a lot of different fonts. Look at this trade gothic, by the way. Have a look at this. Metrics. Ooh, there's gaps everywhere. And then we go back to optical. Mm, that's better. By the way, if you've got a drop cap, which I do, have a look over here. Sometimes we don't like the space between the initial cap and the first letter. If you want to kern that, just hold the Alt key down. You just kern in between there and you can change that space. That's kind of nice, isn't it? Some people like to optically 
change the space on the left hand side here and move that out a little bit. We'll get to that in a second. We're talking about the optical margin alignment. Let's have a look down at this side here and we can see that along this line we've got a comma, we've got a dash and they kind of leave a little bit of an indent in on uh, justified text. Let's fix it. So I'm going to zoom back out here, grab my pointer tool, select the frame and we've got to go to text frame options. Control B, rather I'm in completely the wrong spot. What am I talking about? I've completely lost my mind. It's uh, under the type menu, under story. Oh, my goodness. It's a little bit hard to find. I'm having one of those days. Sorry. I think it's something in the Adelaide water. Go ahead and choose optical margin alignment. And then if I zoom in there, see optical margin alignment under the story menu, it will hang out those little things to make this look or appear more straight or more more aligned when we're talking about justified text. We go back over to the initial drop cap and yes, it is hanging out like that. So the story works brilliantly when we're talking about hanging punctuation on justified text. But what about the headline? I hear you all screaming. Well, there's no need to shout. If we have some punctuation on our headline, now it might not seem all that obvious to you, but visually the headline is too far over to the left. Hmm, I know some of you spotted that, but if I go ahead and I have centered text, it's centered within this box, and I also apply optical margin alignment to that, have a look at moves ever so slightly to the right to allow for that full stop. It's a much better look, and of course, you could fix that up a little bit as well. Hmm. Have we got time for one more? Just one more real quick thing. Let's talk about um, uh, aligned left text, which is what we've got here. Uh, we will um, just put some more in. We'd like to balance these two lines so that they're as even as possible. Select both of them. Paragraph controls. Choose the little pop-out menu here, and we can use, that's right, balance ragged lines. And what that will do is figure out what the best break is in two or three or four lines and make them as even and nice looking as as humanly possible. Gee, I hope you like those few little optical tips. There's a few more, and we'll save those for another day. There we go. That's optical margin alignment, optical kerning, and balance ragged lines. InDesign has got some great typography. Cheers, everyone. Hip hip for typography. Yes. And remember, don't use Comic Sans. There's just another bit of a tip for you. Good luck, everyone. Well, hopefully you enjoyed that tip. I certainly enjoyed providing it for you. So thanks for tuning in, watching another hopefully great episode of Creative Suite TV. Now, just before we go, I have got uh, some news. You'll notice um, my surroundings are not my usual surroundings. I'm working at the um, in, uh, I'm in Glenelg in Adelaide, South Australia at the moment. There's the lovely uh, pier there behind me. I'm working at the Adelaide Advertiser at the moment. And I've been pretty busy. Next year, I'm going to be even busier because I'm taking on a new role. You might have got the clue before the show. I'm taking on a new job. I won't be doing training anymore. So for all my clients listening into the show, I will be taking on a new role with guess who? And I'll be still in touch with all of my clients. So I'll be traveling around uh, the country at various roadshows and events. I'll be dropping in to see a lot of you in the new year under my new role working for Adobe uh, Pacific. So for now, my podcast will continue. Don't worry. But for now, I'm signing off from South Australia. I love it over here. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Help. It's pretty nice, eh? Hey?